Greetings, travelers. Welcome back to the G2 Class Legends. We are down to our semi-final stages. We've narrowed down our opening field of 16 players to our final four, which is going to be Zetalot, Crane, Life Coach, and Super JJ. Our opening yep. match here, I believe, is going to be Zetalot versus Crane. Correct. And Zetalot is uh, not feeling good about this matchup. We saw uh, Crane's hidden forbidden tech come out in the previous uh, series, which is his Raging Worgen Warrior. And uh, Zetalot actually tweeted immediately after that series, well, Priest versus Worgen Inc. feels bad, man. It was a good run, Kappa. <laughs> um, so he's obviously not feeling too confident about this, and I can see why the, the Worgen Warrior will certainly have a pretty favorable matchup going into the Priest. Yeah, it's very similar to the matchup that we saw already between Crane and Ecop, where he was playing the Rino Jackson Warlock, which has a wider access to taunt minions which are needed against the combo deck that crane is sporting in a, uh, as, as his secret secret weapon weapon but zetalot has only death lords right that is on only uh, only minion that has a taunt because i'm not i don't think he's playing belchers in his no. control uh priest versions that we were seeing during the past matches and that's a huge problem the only thing that I can uh, take advantage of is that something you pointed out when we were last uh, talking about it was the fact that Deathlord can get the uh, the Worgen on board before you combo it out, so you can kill it and disrupt the combo. Right. Uh, we did see at one point though, Crane did draw both Raging Worgens into his hand, so he is running two of them, so he does at least have a spare in the case of um, the one being pulled out by the Deathlord, but. Looks like we are getting into the game very shortly. The game has started. We do see the Control Priest up against the Raging Worgen Warrior, as expected. That Emperor indicates this is the Worgen deck, as well as the Shield Block. And that Fiery War Axe is just going to come straight down, chop down the Zombie Chow. And uh, two weapons in the opening hand is going to go a very, very long way to deal with uh, any possible early aggression that the Priest might mm -hmm. have. There's the Execute for the Death Lord, but I, I don't think that uh, Crane would like to use the Execute on the Death Lord. He might just wait for, for the Death Lord to die the moment he has the Vorgan in hand, right? Oh, well, there's the option to spawn a patron for the Death Lord. Mm -hmm. There's a chance, not an option. So, hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah, Zellot here is going to choose not to play the Death Lord. Obviously, like, valuing the, the idea that he can have it later on in the game. And there we go. We now see a Worgen in hand. So he should feel relatively confident now removing a Death Lord when it comes down to it. Because he does already have his win condition in hand. Um, so it will be interesting to see. Okay, it looks like uh, Blademaster Power Word Shield might come down here. But again, that is just really exposed to an Execute if Crane yeah. has one in hand. So isn't better just Orkanai? No, you need to keep the Alkanai for the circle of healing combo with uh, just against patrons, right? Yeah, I think so. No light bomb in hand yet, so he needs to have maximum options to potentially be able to deal with a patron board that comes down. Because in case you didn't see the previous series, this is a patron warrior Worgen OTK hybrid deck. Um, a lot of the cards do interact in the with both of those win conditions. You know, your inner rages, your whirlwinds, your death spites, etc. Both Worgens. All right. Two Worgens are in the deck. Well, we didn't see that in the previous games. Oh, but... we did. I, I actually just mentioned that a little while ago. I, um, we saw him draw two in one point again in the did we? series. Oh, yeah, we okay. Did. Yeah. So I was, I was saying, even if the Death Lord does pull out a Raging Worgen, he will have a spare in his deck that he can draw um, alongside the Faceless Manipulator to still do the maximum damage. Um, so yeah, we, we, we did see that he's playing both of them. It looks like he's just going to play one out here just for some pressure. Raging Worgen, go. Wow. Nice. I like it. Well, this tells your opponent, well, I have a second one in the deck or in my hand. Right. Now, so what do you seen... do about that? Yeah, it's interesting. Having seen one... Charge ex Cleric? Use charge Cleric. It might not actually be the worst idea. That Worgen is scary for sure. Charge Cleric, clear, clear it, but then you sacrifice your draw engine, and yep. that's a problem. Huh. You can't play Death Lord, it dies, just dies to the board immediately. Yep. Rampage combo with Injured Blade Master! <laughs> 
execute, thank you. Second yeah. execute will have some insane value here. Yeah, I mean the second execute is is a very high valuable, uh, sorry, high value resource for Crane here because he is possibly going to need to use that to get rid of a, a Death Lord, which is the only taunt that can come down in the late game. But uh, just way too much value here on that seven six, I think, for him to pass up using it. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if if Crane comes up with something creative here. True. But I, it seems like the exit had just too much value, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. But like the execute comes down, and I think we just start pushing damage here. It looks like that with the inner next, rage this time. That next weapon is being developed at some point soon, so I kind of like inner rage and deal eleven to face this turn. I don't see anything wrong with that. But no, it looks like Crane is content to to slow play, and I'm sure he understands this deck strategy a lot better than I do. So. Mm -hmm. Well, now it will be the turn when you play Cleric, Charge, Kill, and Heal the Cleric. Uh, what? What? The Cleric uh, Sorry, no, no, no. The Cleric's gonna die. Yeah, 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 never mind. So he's just gonna go for Heal Face, plays the Orcanite out on board here. And that is a little bit awkward for Crane to deal with right now. Uh, mm. The Emperor Thorasan is going to hit a Worgen, a Faceless, and a Whirlwind. So he has his Activator, and he has a 6-mana combo, which will let him draw Charge. So, so he can't play Charge and Rampage in the same turn as both of these cards. So you may consider this this isn't enough to Emperor in this situation, but we have seen him just go for an Emperor a little bit earlier than I've expected him to in the past. And yeah, he's going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Interesting. But I guess that um, it's important to play that uh, um, play that Emperor right now when there's the only way of dealing with that minion is to use an Entomb on turn 6, a Light Bomb. Yeah. Or a Shadow of Death, and none are present. Yeah, so we may be back into the situation of do we need to charge a minion at that Lothar, or can I Soul Priest plus charge to kill it? Wow. No, you can't do that because then you lose the patrons. Yeah, that's the dilemma he's in right now, but I mean, the patrons may or may not be in hand. This Emperor Thorasan is definitely on the board right now, and if he leaves it alive for a second turn, he almost certainly loses the game. We discussed that in the last series. Yep. Uh, so I think he has to just deal with the problem that's in front of him right now. Because if he leaves this Emperor alive and then suddenly there's like a Acolyte Whirlwind Battle Rage play or something like that, then that's game ending, but just leaving well, the Emperor up. Like... He's dead if he leaves the Emperor alive, because that's exactly 29 damage next turn. Uh, he has no way to charge the Worgen though, right? Oh yeah, right, not charge. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, it's alright. Uh, take a deep breath. It'll be fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, he does in fact decide to leave the Emperor alive, so double discounts are coming in. Luckily for Zetalot, there isn't a way to draw additional cards for Crane, which would be the extremely punishing thing here. And with both executes used, there is the potential for that Doctor Boom to get a lot of value now. The problem is the warrior is already at 36 HP, so he's not intimidated by the fact that there's a Dr. Boom on the board, he might just deal damage to the face this turn what with the weapon, know? with the Fear War Axe, you don't, or, nah, you, you value the, the, the whirlwind on a stick more than the Fear War Axe charges right now, because you want to, to kill the bombs in the next turn. I think so, yeah. But this is actually a little bit awkward for Crane. You know, we said leaving the Emperor alive is probably leads to a defeat, but not having any card draw to really compound on that Emperor advantage has left Crane in a little bit of an awkward spot, but he's getting enough work done here with the weapon and the, the Emperor that as soon as he draws the, the charge mechanic, he's going to be in really good shape. By the way, now he also has the option to use the Fear War X as an activator for the Death Spite. An unexpected additional whirlwind. Yeah, that's very true. So it looks like he's going to go ahead and just trade the 7-7 seven, seven straight in. Not going to try his luck with the boom bots here. And is he healing face at 24? Okay, it looked like for a second he pointed that heal at his own face, which was going to look very, very strange with the the, the double cleric play. But does mm -hmm. go for the, boot, the heal on the boom. Picks up the flash heal. Can try and use that defensively or to draw two more cards now from the Doctor Boom. And that one for sure looked like it was pointed at face. I was yes. just wondering, does it make a difference? Because most likely it will die anyway. If you have 24 or 30, probably there's no difference in the damage output. 
Mm. There's a rampage. No charge, so just missing the charge. And this is this is the kind of game that we have seen Crane lose, right? With this deck, he's come up against these control decks, the Reno Lock and now the Priest, and he's won the games fairly comfortably where he's hit his cycle cards. But the games he's lost are these kind of awkward games where he's just drawn his combo pieces. Sounds weird, but he's drawn his combo pieces a little bit too early, right? Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's wanted, he wants his cycle cards to fight for the board a little bit in the first place. And he's just going to choose to axe down that uh, Death Lord here and just hope that uh, Charge comes into his hand relatively soon. Pyromancer. Uh, no way of healing the uh, Death Lord apart from the hero power, which can be removed by the Wound effect from, from Wound um, and the weapon. Yep. But it still doesn't really solve the problem because you have, you're just sitting awkwardly on the combo pieces. But you can't use them. The yeah, so we have seen two copies of charge in the deck as well. So if he picks one of those up now, nope, gets the Gnomish Inventor. So it's going to have to... How much damage is he looking back at now? 9, Nine. 11, 12, 13, 19 damage. So it still probably feels relatively comfortable, although the Justicar is down, which increases the potential burst with the Orcanai Soul Priest. Well, he wants to use first the Whirlwind. I was wondering why. Because if he picks up the charge, does he win? Charge will be for three mana, four mana Vorgan, a uh, Vorgan, sorry. So that's eight. You have one mana left. No. Oh. oh. Can he live this turn? I think. I am not sure. Is he even supposed to whirlwind here? Because he's going to end up taking damage to, to the face from the boombox. But, but the boombox might land on on the gnomish on the gnomish inventor. Right. Oh. This is tough. This is tough. Boombox face for three. three. Uh, which is not terrible. Now, what do you get? Belcher? Patron. Patron. Oh. It's 20. There's 13, 14, 15 damage. Is Zalos one damage off lethal, I think. 7, well, 8, 9, 15. Oh, can I? Deals four damage? Yeah, no, that's including that. He's one damage oh, okay. off. Yeah, 15 on board plus the four from the Orcanai. He's one Well, off. he has charge. Oh, yeah, it's charge. He has charge. Yeah, that's lethal. Nice. Well, he will charge Alkanai, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you might as well take advantage of it, right? Wow, so he killed his opponent with his own weapon, which was the charge. <laughs> yeah, the charge just came one turn or one card too late for Crane there, but. As we've said, these are the kind of games this deck can lose. You you made the 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 comment of the you know, the deck is only really losing to itself, which is a nice way of putting it. These draws where he does just get all of his clunky combo pieces way too early. Mm -hmm. and it's a little bit unfortunate, but um, again, Crane will feel like he's in a pretty comfortable position here, even though he's lost the yeah. first game. I think he realizes he's in a favored matchup. He'll just continue to queue up the same deck. It's very similar to the situation that he was in against Ecop. The two games he lost. Uh, because it was, it was a 3-2 match. Uh, the two games he lost, he lost because he had a really atrocious, atrocious draws. And this might be the same case against Zetalot. Zetalot now stole a win, basically, because he's so unfavored in this matchup. Uh, but if if Crane whiffs, whiffs out on draws for the next two games, it might actually be a 3-0. Yeah, very true. I mean, it's a possibility with this deck. It was for sure a possibility with the old patron deck that you you just get those horrible draws where you're sat with a handful of inner rages and whirlwinds that don't really do anything. But um, the point of this deck and the, the point of the old Warsong patron as well is that you play so much card draw and so much cycle that even in those situations where you do draw badly, you can quickly like, you know, flood flood your hand and use mm -hmm, battle mm -hmm. rage and acolyte whirlwind, top deck of battle rage, etc. Like your draw cards compound on each other so quickly that you can very, very soon like turn a bad draw into a good one. Um, but Crane, as we saw in that game, just didn't hit any of the cycle cards until the Gnomish, which came way too late. So, Yep. Unfortunate for him. I was just wondering, maybe the executes were kind of too early? No, the venues were just too... Just too big to ignore them, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just the way it lined up, right? Like that first execute on the first Blade Master, you thought was fine because you had the second execute in hand. And then the second execute on like a rampaged Blade Master, like you'd have to be crazy to turn that down in the end. So yeah, that's true. 
definitely don't blame him for using those two executes in that situation, but it did allow Zet a lot to build up the pressure very quickly with the with the Doctor Boom afterwards. Wow, he mulliganed away Emperor. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, with the coin in the in the old Warsong patron deck, which is you know what I'm basing kind of all my experience with this deck on because I haven't played this deck. A, a, I mean, I played a, a Ra Raging Wargan OTK Warrior a decent amount back in the day, but I haven't really experimented too much with this hybrid deck. So my experience all comes from like the old Warsong patron deck and against mm -hmm. Priest with a weapon in hand and with a uh, with the coin. I think I'm pretty much always keeping Emperor Thorasan. So. Well, the problem is that you don't want to play Emperor Thorson if you're not uh, holding at least three combo pieces on your hand, right? Yeah. Even maybe four. Yeah. No, no, three should be enough. Three, three seems reasonable, and we have seen Crane play it a little bit more aggressively than I would expect. But you know, it's the same thing with the with the old deck. You'd be waiting for those those you know two or three of those key cards to come into hand. You know, Warsong, Frothing Berserker, etc. Um, but it's just such an important card to have at some point in the game that it just feels like worth holding on to. True. Is um, we know that he's playing double battle rages in the deck. Yeah. Uh, but the zombie child will now heal him to thirty, so that will be an useless card. Useless card for some time. Double slams will help him cycle through the deck, but there has to be there has to be a target for it. Shield block and acolyte of pain. That's not really helpful. We saw a uh, crane go tempo wargan in the previous game, but in that situation he had both in his hand. So with only one, it looks like he's uh, a little more reticent to make that play. He's going to hold on to it for the value. And looks like acolyte of pain is going to come down here. Interesting because he can use this for guaranteed value later with the pyromancer if he wants to. And um, it looks like he just wants to get rid of that second fiery war axe charge right now. Seems about right. Well, it may, uh, I mean, it, I guess it makes sense. Like he doesn't want to have the the guaranteed execute activator on for when he plays the Death Lord, and he has. I was gonna say he has these that, Orsha clerics to protect, but then he just goes and plays one out anyway. I, I really like that because most likely Crane will uh, kill the cleric with the weapon, and that leaves an option to play Pyromancer cleric and hit multiple heals mm -hmm. for card draw, right? Because you will generate the card draw from Acolyte of Pain and the heal at the same time. Yep, makes sense. Um, oh wow, he's going to go for the slam on the cleric here. Picks up the faceless. Does that mean he's going to use the inner rage to clear it? Or perhaps even the whirlwind? Interesting Will option. He? He's going to take down the... Yeah, it looks like he's going to use whirlwind here just to remove the card draw engine from his opponent. Okay. Well, the, that's, that's actually true that um, whirlwind doesn't hold much value against priest. No. Um, and with the inner rage in hand, you don't need the whirlwind to be your initial source of damage activator on the mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. the on the wargan because you have the inner rage anyway. It's very similar to mid range patron. Like if you want to use either whirlwind or inner rage to kill a um, one health minion, it's usually better to use the whirlwind because inner rage is just a, a much more flexible card overall. Holy champion gets on the board, but unfortunately there is nothing to heal right now, so we're not going to be buffing that anytime soon it's just a three five minion plugging away but the second holy champion is now a pretty big draw and is he gonna play out the pyromancer as well okay i mean this turn well that, that that's quite interesting right because um, if you are holding that back your opponent is not able to read if your opponent has the option to spam heal right yep that spite's a good pickup he's gonna favor taking down one of the holy champions over taking down the pyromancer um so there is potential for explosive things to happen here. If he could play a couple of minions into Power Word Shield, into Circle of Healing, then some absolute nonsense can happen in terms of dealing damage. But uh, no Circle of Healing in sight. So he would have to uh, use the Flash Heal or the Thought Steal here if he wants to start dealing some damage with this, uh, this Holy Champion. Um, I think that's probably unlikely. Well, you can't really uh, use the Flash Heal first because you're not no. healing. So you could like Thought Steal first, then Flash Heal one of the minions, and then uh, Hero Power Heal one of the minions and get the, the Holy Champion doing seven damage. Mm -hmm. um, I like this play though, this is something that some people miss. It's not a hugely advanced play, but obviously 
you know, you're, you're healing your opponent for two to deal two extra damage, but at the same time, you get a permanent buff on the board. So yeah. it's actually much better to heal your opponent's face there than to just deal the three. Exactly. But now it's the turn. There's an Emperor in the, in the, in the hand, right? But the only combo pieces you have is Worgen and Charge and Faces. Actually, that's a lot. That's not bad, right? Uh, yeah. So maybe four. you just drop the drop the emperor this turn mm. will immediately get dealt with by some method you know at best you can expect it to trade for the holy champion but you can probably expect the priest to come up with something better than that and suddenly this is looking really dangerous because if you just play emperor and your opponent has some sort of series of spells with a circle of healing there's three minions in play already so that holy champion could just be enough to threaten lethal on its own at this point mm -hmm. he has no way of dealing with it really well, he can silence, it. right? Yeah. Silence Emperor. Yep. Silence Coin Emperor? Sure. I like it. So, the combo with the uh, Faceless and Charge is now 8 mana. So it's ever available next turn. And you have from that 4, 6, 7. Each, each Wargon is 7 damage. So you can kill the Death Lord with one of the attack from the Vorgan, so... Uh, no, each Vorgan is 8 damage, right? Plus, plus 2 from the Inner Rage, plus 2 from the Charge, and plus 1 from the Natural Enrage. So it's 8. Oh yeah, it's 8. Yeah. So, wait, that's 32 damage! Well, now he has double Inner Rages too, right? Yeah. And he only uses one AoE. He does have to get through the Death Lord, though. Well, he can use one. Uh, wait. He can use one attack from the Worgen. So each Worgen will have. He can use he can use charge on the Worgen without using the inner rage first. Attack into the into the um, into the Death Lord, and then copy it. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is fine, and then he'll only need. Well, no, he can only use one attack because the death the the Wargan will die as soon as he makes the first attack here. No, he can attack it first, right? And okay. now he copies the copies. Oh, wait, what? But he can't. He can't copy yeah. it. He doesn't. He can't interrage. So it. why he didn't he copy it first? Uh, good question. If you copy it first, then you have a fresh free free with charge, and you can double interrage that. And you have 8, 16, 24 uh, damage, right? Still wouldn't have been lethal though, yeah. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. Well, I don't know whether Crane played that turn expecting him to be, to be able to have lethal and then realized that the, the amount of damage on the organs didn't quite add up, but whether he felt like he need, needed to make the play for the board, but either way, it didn't work out, and he has now used one of his win conditions, so... Um, luckily, he got the double acolyte in play, so he is able to, to get some cycle going here if he needs it. But he's now, after using all those combo pieces, he's a long way away from uh, picking up the combo pieces that he needs to win the game. Mm -hmm. And Patron is not a winning strategy in this matchup. No. Because I mean, of the light bombs. Yeah. Looking at the hands, it would work out really well, but I would be surprised if Crane like thinks it's something he can rely on here. That will be an inner rage move first, most likely. Oh, never mind. Cruel Taskmaster. Taskmaster looks great. Uh, Rampage. Rampage, but he doesn't have the Wargan anymore. Well, can you use it on the Alkalite of Pain? Uh, it would only take it up to four health, though, right? No, it's plus three, plus, plus three. three so plus take three. it up to five, so it still just gets answered cleanly by the um, by the Death Spite. Yeah, so. but you draw two cards from that. Uh, oh, that's a good point. That's a very good point, yeah. Hmm. Looks like he might be going for the Grim Patron player here, though. What about Faceless, the Rampaged um, uh, Acolyte of Pain? And you will have two Acolytes of Pain, which will be 6-5. Right. Are you just giving away too much of your total combo potential at that point, though? You will have used a Worgen, your Faceless, and a Rampage. So you're kind of like, you're totally all in on one Morgan at that point, right? And I don't know if you even have enough combo cards to like make it work afterwards. So I think he probably does need to hold on to the Faceless for the second Worgen if he's going to have any chance of winning this game. Hmm. He just played out a patron onto the board for without even in a raging at once. Kind of crazy. 
Um, well, so I... he, he doesn't want to play into Alkanai Circle of Healing anyway, right? Right, but he just gives up his patron to the Death Spite for sure. I guess in doing that, he's going to draw additional cards off the Acolyte, which is something. Um, so I guess this is progressing his game plan to an extent, because now he does just need to like get back to his second Wargan, wherever that is in his deck. So I, I guess I can see this line, just you know, using the patrons as a utility card, using the, the threat of it to make sure that the opponent has to deal with it. I guess that makes sense. To be honest, doesn't look bad for Zetalot at all. I, I was kind of biased towards Crane before we started this match. But it looks really, really bad for Crane. The 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 Dr. Boom is just so threatening. So he need, you need to deal with that immediately. Yeah, but the execute goes down, and now Zerlot doesn't really have a lot of pressure to follow this up with unless he draws something good. And the Worgen has come into hand, which means he's now just a charge away from being able to do a ton of damage with his hand again. Hmm. I think I'm still favoring Crane in this matchup ever so slightly. Now that he's got to the Worgen, he just needs to dig through his deck a little bit more and find that, uh, find that charge. That should be enough damage. Uh, he won't be able to use the Rampage, but he can use the two Inner Rages alongside um, Wargan, Charge, Faceless, Double Inner Rage. He can kill the... Um, what well, he can attack into the bomb. It's kind of risky. Is he going to do it? No, he's just going to go face by looks of things. So he'll just leave the Patron on board without any kind of backup. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've we've seen him do this twice now in this match. Yeah. It's not the first not time only we've in this seen match. it either. Yeah, exactly. Against against Eco, he was doing that like twice already too. Right. But poor patrons, right? They have so much respect that they actually get a deck named after them, and then in this deck, they're just kind of this throwaway guy. It's just like, ah, just just go out there and be a distraction. <laughs> it's fine. Well, Light One will take care of that single patron. Yeah. And you can use Circle of Healing to gain double card draw. Seems good. Wow, how much damage was that from the bombs? Three? Uh, I think it was four. I think it was two twos. I didn't quite see. I think Crane was at 14 at the start of his turn, but it wasn't a huge amount of damage. Could definitely have been a lot more. Battle Rage again. A turn too late. It's a turn too late. No measurement again.